Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to some more Gran Turismo 7 Science. In this one, after update 1.38, we are going to do some testing with traction control. In terms of, you know, what does it do to your lap times, does it help you to look after the tyres, and uh, yeah, we'll take a look at what it does to your tyre temperatures as well, given we have the app which gives us that data. Now we have looked at traction control in the past, probably most notably not long after the game launched, when uh, Gran Turismo 7 launched, the, the, the physics were pretty sketchy, the cars were very sketchy on the rear, pretty difficult to drive and so a lot of people actually used traction control in the early days just to make the car a little bit safer to drive and yeah I was definitely a driver as well, I think for about the first two months I used traction control in Gran Turismo 7 because I'd just seen the benefit of it, you know, allowing me to be a little bit more aggressive on the throttle and uh, preventing me from spinning the car out. Uh, as over the, the months and the updates, the physics have changed, the cars are easier to drive, the benefit of having traction control in terms of making the car safer was lost and uh, most people have dropped it because it's just seen as being quicker to not use it. And during the, those updates as well, there has been an update to the way the traction control was implemented, it's definitely something I've not tested so it's something I want to kind of take a look at anyway with traction control but another reason for it was it was mentioned in my uh, live stream chats that people felt that traction control also helped to look after the tyres a little bit more so yeah that's the that's the things we're going to look at as this test unfolds you've seen the details there of the test on the screen as I was uh, jabbering away it's based on this week's daily race see we're in the Peugeot RCZ which is an MR car tends to be rear limited uh, this week's daily race C is 15 laps around the Nürburgring sprint track in the group 3 cars and it's very much a tyre wear race with most people struggling to get the tyres to the end on the no-stopper with the soft tyres with tyre wear at time 6. So the test here is pretty much daily race C only we've made the conditions as equal as possible. One of the most important things when you're going to do any comparisons, comparisons is to equalise as many things as possible. So we've turned the wind off and we are doing these test runs one after the other so the conditions should be the same but it doesn't mean there will be, there may be very subtle differences in terms of environmental temperatures, in terms of the track and also in the air, so do bear that in mind, but I've tried to keep as many things as equal as I possibly can. We're on the traction control zero run here, I did about eight or nine laps in the car prior to doing the first test run, just to make sure we're up to speed with it. We're doing 25.5s in the Genesis, so when we do daily race C, and that was the kind of lap times I was looking to be, you know, mid 25s in the RCZ here. Very nice car to be fair, we've got the, uh, the brake balance at minus 5, that's just the kind of what you run this car at when you run this race, because it helps you to look after those rear tyres. Put the brake balance to the front, put the majority of the braking at the front, and it should help to look after the rear tyres. Now we're just driving around about 95%, we're driving pretty aggressive, but I don't want to be sliding the car about either and uh, we're not really doing any tyre saving techniques either, it's just all about testing whether the traction control actually has an effect on the tyre wear as we go through the test runs. We're coming into the last corner here of the traction control zero run, uh, best lap time there are 25.2 in the 25s up to lap 7, tardy lap 1, lap 9, finish with a 26.2 and maybe finishing with around about what 20% of the rear left tyre, which is the tyre that takes the most damage in this race. 14 minutes, 16.1, that is the trash control zero run, and that's what we're going to be comparing to as we move on to our traction control one run. So everything else about this test is identical, it was ran straight after the first test, so the conditions should be equal, but I did mention earlier on we, we have no way of being able to know what the track temperature is or the air temperature is, they don't tell us when we do a custom race. The only place they tell us is those details is in sport mode or if you go into a time trial uh, through the, the world maps. But we don't get it when we do a custom race, so hopefully it's the same and it shouldn't be massively different even if it is slightly different overall. Now the first thing I did notice driving the car here with traction control 1 is it felt identical. To driving without traction control on, uh, didn't feel like it was bogging down in the corners in the slightest, I didn't feel like I was getting hindered on the throttle, uh, didn't feel like I was getting any kind of understeer on the throttle either, it just felt absolutely identical, the only thing that was maybe slightly different is it just, in the back of the mind you know you've got the traction control on, it just gives you that little bit of confidence to just be a bit more aggressive on the throttle. If the back end was to step out, you just know the traction control is going to pick it up. Now this car is very, very stable on the rear anyway, 
It's one of the kind of features of some of the MR cars in the game, the McLaren, the Peugeot, the uh, the Porsche. Is you can be very aggressive on the throttle anyway, they have ridiculous amounts of rear traction, so actually getting the back end moving is not the easiest thing anyway. But yeah, that was really the only thing I kind of noticed with the traction control. You just you felt like you had a little bit of a safety net there. And uh, it's kind of reflected in the, the lap times. Uh, now, our best lap there, not quite as fast as the best lap we did on the Traction Control Zero run, but it's very nearly there, and overall consistency was actually a little bit better. Uh, you know, we were kind of doing 25 sixes and sevens for a lot of the laps in the Traction Control Zero run, but a lot of our laps here are down in the 25 three and the 25 four range. Very interesting indeed. Certainly felt the car was no slower with uh, Traction Control on one compared to zero. And if you've been taking a look at the tyre wear in the bottom right hand corner, that looks very, very similar indeed as well. We'll look at that closer later on in the video. In terms of finishing time, 14 minutes, 13.5. So actually 2.6 seconds faster overall with the traction control on one compared to the traction control on zero. Now, you could possibly put that down to the fact that we're just getting more comfortable with the car and track combination, but still something to bear in mind as we move forward through the video. So, the tyre wear looked fairly similar between Traction Control 0 and Traction Control 1, so I thought, you know what, let's for the third test, let's go nuclear on the Traction Control, let's put it all the way up to 5, maximum Traction Control, and see what this does to the car in terms of lap times, and whether Traction Control indeed has an effect on tyre wear. Now, the first thing I noticed straight away with the track control on 5 is that the car just felt overall more sluggish. Didn't have the same rotation, didn't uh, got a little bit of understeer out of some of these corners, this one in particular, uh, just a bit of a strange effect, I just felt, I could feel the car was just slower, I just felt that the car was bogging down a little bit more out of the corners, the, the track control far more intrusive on my uh, ability to manoeuvre the car through the corners compared to Traction Control 0 and Traction Control 1 and it's fully reflected there in the lap times, we're around about a second a lap slower, however looking at the tyre wear it's clear to see at this point that the tyres are in far better shape on all four corners of the car compared to the previous two runs but yeah, the price of better tyres just made the car slower so you're not getting any benefit from those fresh tyres, we're actually 12 seconds slower overall in our finishing time. Interesting stuff I reckon. Ok then, let's put all the data on the table and see if we can figure out what's going on here. So, we've got our three runs there and we've got in the bottom of the screen, you've got the tyre wear for each of them as well. That is the tyre wear as we cross the line or just after we cross the line on lap number 10. At the top there you've got the tyre temperatures, we've got our finishing time, we've got our best lap and we've got our... Uh, slowest lap as well. So it's clear to see that Traction Control 5 has significantly saved the tyres over Traction Control 1 and 0. But we also can see that our best lap is nearly a second, in fact it's over a second a lap slower than the two previous runs. Our worst lap is nearly a second slower than Traction Control 1. And I think we can see where that tyre saving has came from. If we look at the tyre temperatures, with Track Control 5, we just don't get the temperature in the tyres compared to the other two runs. We know from doing previous tests and previous videos that tyre temperature, the, the lower the tyre temperature is, or the higher the tyre temperature is, the more tyre wear you get. So if you're not getting the tyres up to that temperature, you get a little bit less tyre wear. But you also go a little bit slower because you've not got the tyres at the peak temperature either. Then you've got the intrusion of the traction control in there as well, and you start to see why the lap times are a little bit slower, but you do have better tyres, so it kind of looks to me like, you know, maybe there's a sweet spot in there. Now, traction control 1 does have slightly better tyre than traction control 0. It's marginal. You probably won't be able to see it on the screen, but I've got it on the big When I put it on the big screen, putting the, the video together, I could see it was slightly better. But it's within the margin of error, so I don't want to say conclusively that Traction Control 1 is saving the tyres better than Traction Control 0. But we can see the Traction Control 5 definitely saves the tyres better than either 1 or 0 as well. But we also can see the reason for that is we're just not getting the temperature in the tyres. So the tyres are just not getting up to temperature and they're not getting the heat through them. They don't get the tyre wear. So we can, in conclusion, I think, say that running Traction Control 
does make your tyre wear better. But if you go too high on the track control, then you get no benefit from it. It slows the car down so much that you don't get any benefit from having the better tyre. So it makes me think, is there a sweet spot in there? Track control 2, track control 3. You know, maybe it costs you a couple of attempts per lap, three attempts per lap, but the, the benefit of having the better tyres towards the end of the race might well make that worth it. Or is it a tactic you could use where at the beginning of the race you're starting to the P10 and you know the first two laps are going to be a total cluster, so you put track control on four or five, you know you can still run the pace with the car like that. What they're going to be doing over the first couple of laps is everybody jostles for position. So maybe you get a few laps in there with maximum tyre saving using the traction control and then that gets the, the benefit towards the end of the races. It's an interesting one for me. I definitely, definitely learned some stuff here. I actually used something that I learned from this video in the Nations race. Uh, the X2019 round Lago Maggiore. I actually ran that full race with track control on one because I did feel from the data we've seen here that possibly that had a marginal saving on the tyres and I was able to use that. My race was a bit of a disaster for the first half to be fair but I was then able to use that to run longer stints on the soft tyres so hopefully the video has been useful in some way shape or form for you. Hopefully you've maybe learned something from this. Maybe it's something you can use going forward but yeah. It's been an interesting learning experience for me. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.